Welcome to Math Inspector. I am the mysterious YouTuber, the 137. Let's get started. I have a new file sitting here in the text editor, and I'm going to create an array of numbers. A simple array just to show off how the graphing system works. You'll see when I save the file that it creates a new entry in the project view on the left hand side. Project view is like a file explorer, except instead of files and directories, it shows you all of the contents of the modules. It's based on Python's extensive functionality for looking into the internals of various functions and classes. So this is something that I love so much. I'm going to drag the points array into the workspace. Uh, it's really just that easy. I'm going to click the graph, and now you can see here are the points. All right, so now I'm going to import a function right from Numby. Everything is happening right in this file. And on the left, it showed up when I saved the file. And that's the NumPy power function. So I'm just editing it in the workspace. We're going to look at squaring that simple array, and boom, there you go. And I'm just going to show you uh, from the console. I'm going to change the value of the array, and everything will update. Okay? So maybe you don't know about the power function and you want to learn more, so you just click on the dock viewer and there is all the information right at your fingertips. So you can see the first argument is the points and the second argument is the exponent. And then we have the code examples. So I'm going to click on one of the code examples and it actually runs it in the console, which is pretty cool. It makes it really easy to explore and learn without necessarily knowing what you're looking for. Uh, right now I'm going to create an array of complex numbers. The way the graphing system works, it just tries to guess what you're trying to do and it will show you uh, what, it, what it comes up with. So, in this case, you give it an array of complex numbers, it's going to plot the complex numbers in the graph. Okay, let's take a look at that, and there it is. So we have that line, the sloped line, and then it transforms into this vertical line when we square it. That's interesting. So, but that's just some points. It'd be nice to take a look at a, a whole line. So the way that works is really simple. Um, we just put the array of points inside of another array, and that's how the graphing system knows that you want to see a line of complex numbers instead of points. And so there it is. So we're going to take the power of that just to confirm what we saw before, and there it is. So that sloped line with a slope of 1 now it transforms into a vertical line when we take the power. So let's just edit the values and let's, let's make a really twisty line. I'm just making up some random values. So we're going to have a really twisty line and see what happens when we take the power of it. So there's our line and then we take the power and all right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, the complex grid. It's a, fun a function that I wrote earlier. It, it's too complicated to look at now, but it's very simple what it does. It creates a complex grid. So we're going to take the power of that whole grid. See, this is what conformal mapping is all about. When we apply functions to entire regions of the plane. But not every mapping between two regions of the plane is a conformal mapping. The property which is thing which is conformal mappings is that they preserve the angle between lines. In this case we had grid lines and the angle that's preserved is the angle between the tangents of the intersections of the grid lines, which we can see is in fact what's happening in this picture. 
I just want to show you, by the way, that you can control the parameters of the grid from the keyword arguments, which you can show and hide from the right-click menu, just by right-clicking on the item. So, okay, let's play with this. Um, I want to take a look at what happens when we change the power. That's pretty cool, right? But three is even cooler. So this is Z being transformed to Z cubed on that grid. It has that kind of fireworks thing. And we have this lotus petal, I like to think of it, or a candle flame. And now it's starting to get a little bit taxing on Math Inspector. And now we have this rose petal with fireworks inside. It's really beautiful, isn't it? This is why I love conformal mapping so much. I used to collect so many books about conformal mappings and trying to find pictures on the internet, and I can never get enough. I've wanted to make this program for so long, and it's so special to be able to have all this power at your fingertips to just see whatever you want to see in, in such a quick amount of time. And conformal mapping is, is not even the only thing you can do. It also does algebraic geometry, fractals, uh, linear algebra. So what I did there was I set up this exponent to do this animation. Just right click and enter the parameters for the animation. Just trial and error, I found this looks good. Wow, isn't that amazing? Just fantastic. So, I didn't have YouTube videos to learn math from when I was in school. I just checked books out of the library, I'd solve every problem. I think there's something missing when you don't solve problems. That's what's missing from the YouTube scene today. So, one of the dreams of Math Inspector is that we can have a program that it supplements the video. After you watch the video, you can play with a program and just explore and just have fun, right? So I think I owe it to you to show you how I created the animation in the intro of this video. It was so easy. You can see I just imported numpy.polynomial.polynomial, the function polyval. And now I'm defining the function cubic, okay? In Python, this is the syntax of how you define functions. So I need to make sure to specify the arguments are the points and p. And the reason I chose this particular polynomial, well, you can learn more about it from the Math Inspector video in the link. If you want to learn about conformal mapping, you can also check out the 3 blue one brown video that I'm linking, and those links are also in the description of this video. So that's it. That's the cubic polynomial function. It shows up in the file explorer. I put the complex grid in. That's the code for the complex grid. We can talk about that in another video. So I need to put the p coefficient. And there you go. We can see already that adding that p coefficient times x in the polynomial has significantly changed the conformal mapping, which is very interesting. So I'm gonna, I want to animate it. I want to see what it looks like when we go from minus 400 to plus 400. All right, here we go. Make sure to check out the website, mathinspector.com, and register for the alpha test. It's been pretty popular so far. Make sure to like this video and subscribe and share on social media. Leave a comment under the video if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. Let me know what you think of Math Inspector. Alright YouTube, until next time.